Well, I hope you saw how to do this. Again, with the case where one atom has two units of energy, there are three ways for that to happen. Either the first atom, the second atom, or the third atom has those two units of energy. With the other possibility, where that energy is shared between two atoms, again, there are three possibilities. The easy way to think of it is, which is the atom that doesn't get a unit? Well, there are three ways to choose. And so overall, there are six microstates corresponding to this macrostate. Here is our table of microstates so far for this system. And at this point, I'm just going to fill in the rest of the table. You can examine that if you want, but really the details here are not important. All I want you to see is that we can count these microstates. And now look at the outcome. Here we see that the most likely outcomes are the pendulum having very little energy. So, if you started off and the pendulum had quite a lot of energy, say six units, and you look away and you look back again, by the time you look back, it's very likely that the pendulum is going to have less energy than you saw first. I want to relate this back to the coins and think about the hundred coins. Suppose you were flipping a hundred coins and you were tabulating your results and you did this a bunch of times. And then you want to take a rest and so you go away but you ask your friend to flip it one more time for you. Okay, you come back and you find that what's on the table is zero heads. Is it reasonable that that's the outcome of your friend's flip? Well, it's possible, but the probability of it is so incredibly tiny, it would be unreasonable to believe that your friend had actually done a fair flip. Almost certainly, they arranged the system of 100 coins so that all the tails were up. Now think about the pendulum in the container of gas again. But suppose we had more particles of gas than three and a larger energy than six. Then there would be, again, far more ways to distribute that energy among the gas atoms than giving it all to the pendulum. And so just as we see here where the most likely micro, uh, macro states are the one where the pendulum has very little energy, that would be the same, but far, far, far more extreme, just like comparing four coins with a hundred coins. So now imagine you have a pendulum and it's swinging and eventually it ends up not swinging. And now you leave the room and you come back and observe that the pendulum is swinging again. Is it likely that it did that spontaneously, in other words, like a random coin flip, or is it likely that your friend came in and gave the pendulum a bump? I think the answer is pretty clear. Those states where the pendulum has a lot of energy are so unlikely they will never occur without someone doing them deliberately. This is fundamentally the meaning of entropy. It is just a measure of how likely a macro state is. So for our system of coins, the two heads state is the highest entropy state of that system. And for our system of the pendulum in the gas, our, our macro state with zero energy in the pendulum is the highest entropy macro state. The point, however, is that in the sorts of physical systems we usually think about where we aren't dealing with about four objects, but more like a mole of atoms, the high entropy states have incredibly large numbers of microstates and are thus far, far, far more likely than the lower entropy states. This is the second law of thermodynamics, then. Isolated systems evolve so as to maximize their entropy. Think of what that's saying, and again, maybe think in terms of the coins. If you started off with the coins in a low entropy state, such as all tails, and you flip it, well, you're not going to be in a no tails state anymore. Chances are you're going to be somewhere between 40 and 60 tails in a very high entropy state. And now if you keep flipping, you're not likely to 
ever get back to a really low entropy state like all tails. The vague statement of the second law is that entropy tends to increase. So entropy is nothing like energy, which is conserved. Entropy tends to increase. If you look up entropy, you're going to find that there are a lot of statements of it, and I'm going to preview something we're going to see in the next unit with heat engines. The Kelvin-Planck statement of the second law says that it's impossible for a heat engine to convert a quantity of thermal en energy into an equal quantity of work. Maybe it's not clear how that's connected with the idea of entropy we've already got, but we'll see how it is later in the next unit. But the, the statement of the second law that I like is the one I like to call the bloody obvious statement of the second law, which is just that it's very likely that you will observe things that are likely and unlikely that you will observe things that are unlikely. That's really all the second law is saying. High entropy states are the ones you will observe, and systems that start off in unlikely states tend to evolve towards likely ones.